Yo, Mike, what makes you the best player in the universe? Is it the vicious stunts? No, more. Is it the haircut? No, more. Is it the shoes? No, more. Is it the extra long shorts? No, more. Is the shoes it right? Nah. Is it the short socks? No, more. Money's gotta be the shoes! Shoes, shoes, shoes. You sure it's not the shoes? You sure, more. What about the shoes? No, more. Money's gotta be the shoes! We've been here for a few hours, maybe hour. The most. Some people I rode by early, I seen them out all night. I was trying to find the right time to come camp out. I've waited multiple times outside. I've been anticipating this shoe for a little under a year now. I've been out here since uh, about 3.30 and I'm getting the infrared sixes, the Jordan. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm just freezing. Oh, that's right. <laughs> this is like hard to think. I'm just tired. But uh, yeah, I'm getting the infrared sixes. Wonder why Gambino got the game, yeah. Half tied thicky, all she wanna do is bang, yeah. Got her head done, French braids, now she ASAP. Bino so insensitive, she asking why you say that. I'm no outlier, and I guess I'd consider myself to be a sneaker enthusiast. Still spitting that cash flow, DJ Khaled. I got penthouse on both coasts, PH balance. Will I rep those? Why though? Cause I said so. In my collection, I have shoes intended for different things. I really pride myself on not just having Jordans or Nike SBs or just Vans. I have a little bit of everything. I've been collecting for about three years now, and I would say the shoe that really started it for me was the Black Cement 3s. Because I like shoes that you can wear into the ground and they'll just look better and better. I think in 1985, the Jordan 1 breads being banned for Jordan to wear in the games, but him wearing them anyway was actually a good thing because they got more attention than had he been allowed to wear them, and I think that just skyrocketed Jordan brand into what it is today. On September 15th, Nike created a revolutionary new basketball shoe. On October 18th, the NBA threw them out of the game. Fortunately, the NBA can't stop you from wearing them. Air Jordans from Nike. In the past few years in the sneaker game, really, A6, Saucony, and New Balance have really stepped out of being your grandpa's shoes. Now they're collaborating with brand or with boutiques like Kith, Extra Butter, Bait, and different stores like that to make shoes at a much higher quality. I think this has really started getting collectors to branch out from just Nikes. And I think that's a good thing. The way that hype's been getting thrown around a lot lately in the sneaker game would be pretty accurate because now people who actually like a shoe can't even go out and buy it because there's resellers who care nothing about it and just like to take advantage of people who really would like to wear the shoes. And just hype beasts, like, they just don't wear what they like. They'll wear whatever's cool. Like, just wear what you like. That's normal. Don't worry about what everybody else is wearing. A grail is considered to be like your most sought after shoe that you'd like to have in your collection or you do have in your collection. For me, that's the 2002 Supreme SB Dunk Lows. The pair with the red toe, I really like those because they remind me of the Black Cement 3 and Supreme is one of my favorite brands and I just think it's a great shoe. One of the most prized shoes in my collection is actually these Premier Dunks that I just got in. They're uh supposed to be a northern lights seam shoe and i think it's really cool how they were a michigan only release when here in michigan it's hard to get any exclusive to this state only releases and there were approximately 3400 pairs and i feel like i'm pretty lucky to have secured my pair and i plan on wearing them proudly when i purchase a shoe with the money i've earned i feel like i'm buying more than just something to put on my feet I feel like I'm part of a culture and just a group of people and I feel like I'm representing 1988 when Michael Jordan 
for the Fire Red 3s in games, and that was just the beginning of the peak of his career. And I really think that's cool to wear something that he did. Like the sneaker culture is really just gonna keep growing and continuing to thrive as the internet grows because almost kids my age, it's like we were raised by the internet and that's how we develop some of our interests. We thought we were weird for liking shoes, but we go on the internet and there's a few million other people who have the exact same interest. And we just kind of came together into our own community called Sneakerheads. And I think that's pretty cool how that happened. My name is Jason Sturma and uh, I am a retail sales manager at the finish line. Um, I think it was the original like uh, Nike Air Hirachi um, and it was just something about the design of the shoe. Um, it was different. Um, you didn't see it a lot. You know, everybody was wearing Reebok Classics, and I think that's like when Fila first started. And it was just like a different, like sleek design. And that's the shoe. Um, I think it came out in like 94, 95. I was real young, but it was the first like name brand shoe that I ever like fell in love with, and I had to have. And I got a pair, and that's kind of what snowballed this whole love for shoes for me. As far as Grail shoes go, mine have uh, changed a lot. I know when I first started collecting, I was all about basketball shoes, um, you know, the Jordans, and then I got into like KDs and LeBrons and stuff. But I felt like over the last few years, I kind of grew out of that. Uh, I started collecting Air Maxes and Roshi Runs and um, limited New Balance and stuff like that. So I think uh, my Grail shoe used to be the black and red 11 that uh, Jordan wore in the playoffs. And I think just the design that Tinker Hatfield um, came up with for that shoe is just the, the profile is, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful shoe. Um, now, uh, that's a tough one. Um, there's, um, there's a pair of uh, Roshi runs that Nike dropped that are all yellow cheetah print. Um, that I cannot find anywhere in my size. Um, that is my new Grail shoe, um, and I'm on a mission weekly to try to find my size in that. But it's it's expensive, so I can talk about hype and resellers all day. This is um this is a bad thing for the shoe game. Um, I think hype beasts uh, are ruining the the sneaker game. You know, like people who are passionate about shoes, who um, just want to buy them because they love sneakers are getting kind of pushed out because these resellers are coming buying three and four pair and then upping the price on eBay and, and things like that. I think social media is uh, it's kind of a double-edged sword. Um, I think it has done a lot of positive things for the sneaker industry, but then again, I think it has done a lot of bad things as far as like the hype goes. Um, you've got all these like sneaker heads on Instagram now and Twitter. Um, that build this hype for these shoes and then I feel like there's kids out here that really don't are not involved in the, the shoe culture that just want to buy the shoes because of the hype and then they end up you know reselling it and people like you and me who just have a love for the game um, end up getting kind of pushed out because we can't afford you know 400 bucks for a pair of shoes. I don't know that especially with Jordan heads um, that they would ever really switch to these up-and-coming styles to your New Balances um, your A6 gel lights and stuff like that that are doing the collabs with you know your Ronnie Figs and your um, burn rubbers and Atmos and things like that um, I just think it's like different styles um, for people um, I personally love those collabs um, Kith NYC a lot of their collabs are just fabulous especially with the New Balance like 580s and 990s and stuff like that um, I like the fact that that's kind of below the radar you know what I mean because I'm trying to uh, uh, I like to wear stuff that nobody else has you know I think that's why I kind of gave up the uh, the Jordan game 
uh, a while ago. I do think um, the sneaker culture will continue to thrive just because of the, the technology. Um, Instagram in the last couple of years has just exploded with sneaker heads. You know, your um, I Love Swoosh and your Mosh Customs and things like that. Um, I'm excited for the direction that uh, the sneaker culture is going. Um, but then again, on the, the flip side of that coin, I do think that the hype will also continue to grow um, and will continue to push like the older sneaker heads out of the game just because it's not it's not the same as it used to be. But I'm excited for the direction that the, the culture is going in for sure. You know, there are times where I go through like uh, sprees where I spend a little bit too much money. You know, I think any sneaker head can relate to that. Um, there have been times where I have like not paid a bill to get a shoe. Um, and I, I feel like that's just uh, that's just being a true sneakerhead. I'm uh, I've stayed out for like 14 hours one time for a shoe. I mean, I just like new shoes. <laughs> I like Jordans. I don't know. I just got like a sentimental attachment to shoes. There's just something like special about having them. It's like just a certain feeling that you get having them, holding them. I, I'm a big fan of foams, uh, the future, of course the OG retros. Um, it's just, I don't know, it's, it's kind of like an identity. That's why I just always collect the shoes. I still got Jordan shoes from when they first came out, like the very first editions, and he's actually rebuying the same editions that I bought. I don't know about the number of them, but uh, the number I have. But. And we go crash it when nobody's home. So, and it started coming out with a lot of different colors that I don't like, not original color. So, I kind of veered away from phone pods and turned into like Jordan Nike brand. So, I think it gives a variety of different shoes to the sneaker brand, I'm like doing the New Balance with nice kicks and like that. It kind of gives your sneakerhead a variety of shoes to pick from, not just Jordan brands and stuff like that. So, I think it's better that they're doing collabs. I witnessed a ton of a ton of uh, lines that were outrageous. I know I'm from live back in Detroit, and I know when the Galaxy phone pods came out, people were outside. Maybe a day before the actual shoe came out, there was about 500 people outside of the store waiting to get in line. People were outside camping for like three days for the shoe, actually sleeping outside and getting tents. So actually the lines and stuff like that have been outrageous continuously each year. Um, sneaker culture means to me a lot because um, it's not just people seeing their shoes. It's all about networking and stuff like that. You never know what people can meet just off seeing their sneakers, you know. Um, teachers so like that can actually network through actually corporate companies and so like that with just older people wearing shoes. So I know I met a lot of guys that actually put me in connections to Oakland, having me open a home shoe store later on down the line. So I know that would be a good rep for having my shoe store opening up, knowing different guys and older people that have shoes. My name is Jerry and I think what got me into shoes is uh, basketball, for sure. Because uh, I, I play basketball a lot, and I have like Ido, like Kobe, like Jordan, like LeBron. So uh, like I used to play basketball in their shoes. I think uh, sneakers just means memories to me. Because uh, like the shoe I wear uh, right now, because uh, I went to the Christmas game uh, back in the day, uh, like the Lakers versus uh, Heat, so it's LeBron versus Kobe. And then uh, I got the uh, LeBrons uh, back in high school, so I can have them to like uh, contain the memories. So I keep the shoe and the ticket of the game like together. I think shoes are more like 
especially Jordan, so I like uh, fashion stuff. Uh, so, uh, like in China, uh, normally like teenagers uh, wear Jordans because some of their uh, TV idols and some of the sh superstars wear Jordans, even though they don't know about Jordans or they don't know about basketball culture, uh, but they still like rocking them. I do think the releases are a little bit hyped up. The shoes are not as good as before, like the quality, like even the packaging, like the box. Uh, they used to come with like dust, uh, dust bags and all the uh, different accessories. Like the shooting star pack for 500, it's like crazy. But uh, like people are still buying them, so the demand is really high. When you wear a shoe, uh, and no matter like what color of skins you are, and no matter where you're from, uh, like you can identify yourself as a, uh, a sneakerhead. Uh, so like you can uh, like involve with people with different cultures. You can like stand in line like together with people from all around the world. So I think it's really a great thing. Like besides those uh, sneaker violence and stuff, it's really a nice thing to have. Those people who uh, don't understand shoe culture that much, uh, they're probably thinking about like people spending like tons of money on uh, like just shoes. So they think we are like ridiculous. Uh, but like I said, it's all about like memories and uh, it's all about like buying memories like for the future. Because uh, we don't like buy shoes and wear them and throw them away. Uh, we take care of our shoes, uh, just like people take care of their cars. They take care of like what, whatever the, the collecting. My name is Mark Carey, and uh, I go to Michigan State University. I'm a senior. The most crazy story I've heard about some shoes was maybe two or three years ago when the Galaxy Foams came out. Uh, the shoes retail for maybe 200 bucks, but the resale was about five to six thousand. And there were even people on eBay and Craigslist trying to sell cars to trade for the shoes and multiple pairs of shoes for that one pair of shoe and it's just gone crazy that even people unfortunately being harmed, you know, in line, losing their life for the shoes, like, there's, there's been a lot of crazy things going on as far as uh, obtaining shoes nowadays. Chaos at stores and malls all over the country today. Reports of unruly crowds, pepper spray, even gunfire all over shoes. And crowds smashed through glass windows and tried to rush inside the building. And then, as you can see, they finally did get in there uh, and went running for the store. And with stampedes and scuffles today at shopping malls around the nation, people are clamoring for the release of the Air Jordan 11 as an athletic shoe. But only a limited number are available, and it's leading to scenes of unruly crowds. This is what the hype is all about. Limited edition retro white and black patent leather Air Jordans. Violence over a pair of sneakers. These Air Jordans attract big crowds, and today things took a dangerous turn. Two men are on the run after shooting another man for the shoes he had just bought. They had pairs of the new Air Jordan sneakers. Two men attacked them with guns as they pulled up to this house. Uh, one of them jumped out, ran door to door trying to get help, while the other jumped into the driver's seat, tried to drive away but he was shot at least once in the head. One man is in custody tonight after two people were stabbed and a third injured when an early morning fight broke out in Luzerne County. Police say the fight happened as dozens of people were lined up outside the Laurel Mall near Hazleton, waiting for the release of a popular sneaker. A robbery gone wrong over a pair of shoes. Tonight, a Chicago teen is dead and his family is asking what? We're following a developing story, a teenager killed inside his home. The lead involving sneakers that detectives are now investigating. We begin tonight with a wild scene in Little Five Points. A man was shot and killed today while trying to rob a group of people who are waiting in line to buy the latest Nike shoes. A hundred people were reportedly in a fight over pairs of new Air Jordan 11 retro popcorn. A security guard was reportedly trampled by the crowd of people waiting for shoe stores to open early. Do you remember those Spike Lee, Michael Jordan, Nike ads? It's got to be the shoes. It looks like they were right. It started out with what I wear to school that first day. Like these are what make you cool. And this pair, this would be my pair of shoes.
So much more than just a pair of shoes Nah, this is what I am, what I wore This is the source of my youth This dream that they sold to you Four hundred dollars and some change Consumption is in the veins And now I see it's just a, another pair of shoes I've invested maybe maybe twenty five hundred, three thousand dollars on my collection, and now they're definitely valued over maybe six thousand dollars. If I were to sell them, they're kind of like stock nowadays. I guess you sit on them, and if you go broke a little bit, you can sell a pair of shoes and, and eat for a few uh, months or so. Few weeks. I first got started collecting shoes back in like 2009. I uh, picked up my first pair of like with my own money. Um, I got a pair of New Buck 12s. Um, and after that, I got a pair of Taxi 12s. Um, and after that, really, it was just a snowball effect. Um, now, I have maybe about 25, 30 pairs. And they range from maybe the cheapest, like sometimes, up to higher end uh, Salvatore or Ferragamo shoes, uh, all the way to boots and even. Even crazy shoes. Some of the big things I've done for shoes is, of course, camping out. Uh, it's kind of an outdated technique now that uh, they're kind of doing ticket releases or online-only releases. But as of now, online shopping is more more the the norm. Um, now, since it's an online thing, it's even got even crazier. Just a couple of days ago, a friend of mine just told me like a few tricks that would help with online shopping, just faster internet speeds and. The different websites and Twitter links, and it's, it's, it's just a whole new game now. For those who don't know the culture and who aren't familiar with what the term a grail is, a grail could be your most coveted shoe in your collection. Myself, I have over 25 pairs, and the grail for me would be uh, maybe the top three. I can't really narrow it down because I like those three so much, but if I had to narrow it down to one, it would probably be my. 2005 Great Toe 13s. They just re-released a pair, and uh, the pair that they released now is, isn't the same as what I have. But nonetheless, um, when I first got them about two, three years ago, like I restored them. Like I bought them, they were pretty beat, and I restored them, and um, I was pretty much breaking necks every time I wore them. Um, I think the popularity will get even bigger because now it's incorporating like the older buyers who used to be. In my shoes, we used to buy shoes when they were younger, and now since um, they're doing collabs like with, say, Burners for the new New Balances, they're bringing back the older generation as well as the newcomers, and they're just getting a bigger market for shoes and as well as the culture. Um, it's, it's a good thing actually. Um, it's just uh, enlarging the brand and just growing the culture just uh, overall. Back, I think it was nine, 1998. My my cousin was born, and uh, this was uh, around the time of the Bread 13 release. And he got a pair, an infant pair, the one with the soft sole, the booty. And um, that was really the first time that I really, really, really saw Jordans for what they were. And after that, it was like pretty much every Christmas, you know, a new pair of shoes came out. And this is when Jordan was still playing basketball. So growing up through middle school, elementary school, high school, it was just shoes, shoes, shoes. You would just see it everywhere. And you get one pair of shoes. You probably spend, you know, your whole paycheck as a youngster, you know. But having that one pair of shoes, you probably just wear anything in your closet with it, regardless of if it matched or not. But it's just part of the culture. Like if you have fresh shoes on that, you you that guy. The culture's changed just a little bit because of back in the day when the shoes came out, it was more like a, oh man, Michael Jordan's wearing them, I want to wear them too. And it wasn't really a, a big resale market at the time. But now the resale market is, is crazy. You could actually make a living off reselling the shoes. And um, now, compared to back then, the older guys who bought shoes, they're not really into buying shoes anymore because just, just from the fact that the quality is different and a few styles are different, the older colors aren't the same. So the older guys aren't really into it as much, but of course everyone has their favorites, so they want to get back into the game and get the shoes that they want. And then the newcomers, of course, they, they're new to it, so they want to get everything, just like uh, maybe their dad or cousin or uncle might have had them back in the day. But I think it's still a, a big thing for the culture and everyone who wants to be a part of it, even uh, girls now, even they want to be a part of it that might not have wanted to before. Um, I, I don't see the culture of shoe collecting or even just um, Jordan brand, Nike brand ever ending. Because actually last Christmas, I, the same cousin who was born in 98 who bought those uh, Red 13s, I bought him a pair of uh, St. Vincent, St. Mary Jordan 1s. And um, 
well, he's he's kind of younger now, but he's probably like 15 now. But last time I saw him, he beat him to shreds. Of course, he's a young guy, but uh, I think I'll get him another pair of shoes, and I'll probably appreciate him more. You know, definitely take care of him, and he take care of that shoe, he'll get another one. Take care of that, and then slowly, slowly, slowly start to build a collection like I did. So I think in the future it'll it'll still keep going on because I I don't see my passion for collecting ever stopping. It might mm, slow down a bit just because of different times, but I think I'll still try and keep it going as long as I can and even show my younger cousins and maybe nephews or kids one day to enjoy it as, a, as much as I do.